Before you start to learn programming, it's useful to see the big picture, to get an advantage in understanding and in employment when compared to others, because often even people with some coding experience can't quite explain how computers work, what's a programming language or why languages are what they are. In this video, I want to give you a short overview. The only job a computer has is to ask what to do next and do it as fast as possible. And all it can do is add numbers, compare them, remember and forget results. Everything else, all the amazing features of computers, phones and robots is based on those primitive operations. So arithmetic plus basic logic equals all the computing power you can imagine. The language computers speak has nothing to do with the programming languages we usually learn. Python, JavaScript or C++ are made for humans and computer hardware cannot understand them. Computers only understand machine code, those ones and zeros. In the beginning people used to write machine code directly, but this was so, so difficult. Soon engineers and scientists created special tools to convert human text into machine code. So instead of this, you'd write something like that. And I know both seem like gibberish, but at least the second option has some structure and something resembling words. This first programming language was still very bare bones and you had to do a lot of things by hand. For example, you couldn't just add two numbers. You had to decide where to store them, load them without messing up at the memory, process the results, etc. Over the decades, Decades, engineers have been inventing more and more convenient languages and converters, so today modern programming languages are called high-level. They ride high above the reality of this grunt work. In Python, for example, you just write 45 plus 33 and boom, you have the sum without thinking about processors, memory, machine code or anything else. It's like in the past, one had to find seeds, work the land, grow the crops and wait for harvest in order to eat. Today you can just go to the supermarket and never even see a farm. Someone else somewhere else still does it, but you enjoy a high level of convenience and you can focus on other tasks. In the same way, processors still only understand machine code, so all code must be converted into machine code. Most languages you encounter in the industry today are high level. They allow us to think in high level concepts like numbers, data and files instead of low level concepts like processor operations or memory addresses. In fact, there are so many levels between machine code and high level source code like Python that you don't convert your code into machine code directly. Instead, you convert it into a specific format for the target operating system, Windows, Mac OS or Android for example. And then the operating system takes care of generating the final machine code, but this is a whole other story. There are two ways to convert source code into runnable code. Convert on the fly or convert all at once ahead of time. Python and JavaScript are interpreted languages. When you download Python, you actually download a special app called Python Interpreter. It reads your code line by line and asks the operating system and the processor to do what the code says. It's like a personal driver that listens to your wishes, operates the car and continuously obeys you. C, C++ and Java are compiled languages. The special C++ app is called the compiler. It reads all of your code at once and creates executable files. It's more like a rocket. You don't control it. You can only put the program in ahead of time, press launch and hope for the best. Like English, a programming language is just a collection of valid words and rules. Unlike English, programming languages are very, very simple. There are just a few words and rules to remember. These programming languages were invented by people, often by a single person. And while their intentions were always good, some details might be confusing. If something frustrates you as you learn, don't worry. These things aren't absolute truths. It's not like physics that was discovered. It's more like machinery that was invented. Another language might make more sense to you. Languages change and evolve, new ideas appear all the time, and programming languages of the future might look differently. But for now, here's a short program in Python. You might not understand what exactly these symbols mean and what are the rules, but trust me, this program is written according to the rules of Python. It's syntactically correct. 
If we save this code as a new file and call it, for example, program.py, the Python interpreter app will be able to open it and run the code. If you want to give your program to a friend, they will have to install the interpreter first. And you both should be careful. There are different versions of the interpreter, and to guarantee success, you both need to have the same version. If you make a mistake in your code and break the rules, the program won't run correctly. Breaking the rules of the language is called syntax error. For example, if instead of this you'd write that, Python interpreter will complain. You are not allowed to use parentheses like that. All right, here's the same program but written in C. As you can see, <laughs> it's several times longer. If it achieves the same thing, why would anyone use it instead of Python? It takes more work to do the same. Well, C is a lower level language. It forces you to do more work. And just like with food and farming, we can't avoid it. Someone has to do it at some point. For this small program, it doesn't make much sense to choose C over Python. But for other tasks, C is the best choice. In fact, Python won't be possible without C because the Python interpreter app itself is written in C. C is not an interpreter interpreted language like Python. It's a compiled language. To run the program, save the code into a file and then run the C compiler app and it will generate another file, an executable binary file. Afterwards, you don't need the compiler anymore unless you want to change the code. The executable binary file is self-contained and can run on its own. You can send it to a friend and they'll be able to run it too without even knowing what language it was written in. If you open that executable file in a text editor, you'll see lots of gibberish like this. This isn't machine code, but uh, it's close. It's sort of machine code not for the processor, but rather for the operating system. Computer programs are virtual information processing machines. All computing can be boiled down to this. 1. Take some input information from outside. This could be something the user had entered with a keyboard, the clicks they did with the mouse or the finger, something they said like a request for Siri or Google Assistant for example, or it could be a file or a message from the internet. Or it could be nothing. Take zero information from outside. 2. Do something. Do whatever the lines of code describe. Follow the code assuming it's written according to the rules of the language. 3. Possibly produce some output. Put something onto the screen, make a sound, draw an image, send a message, whatever. 4. Repeat or quit. You will write lots of code during your developer career, but uh, you have to recognize, ultimately all you're gonna do is find smart ways to convert input into output. So it's rather simple, but not necessarily easy. To paraphrase Spider-Man's uncle, with great simplicity comes great power.